Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This one's going to be an update on Avatar The Last Airbender Legacy of the Fire Nation. This is the one of these books coming out from Inside Editions. It's a book similar to the already released Avatar Legacy and the soon to be released uh, Legend of Korra uh, and Avatar's Chronicle where it's going to be about 60 or so pages it's going to have these sort of insert postcard type things pull out little bits and pieces and it's going to be mainly sort of a fact file type thing but the gimmick with all of these books is that they are meant to be sort of in-universe artifacts it is a character writing this book and like giving it to someone else so Avatar Legacy which has already been released was a book that Aang put together and gave to a younger Tenzin and Avatar's Chronicle is actually going to be Korra putting together like a journal basically of her journey. Uh, chronicling her time as the Avatar for Tenzin. I'm not sure if it's necessarily being written for him but it's more of just to pass. I, I think the idea if I remember correctly is actually for her to pass on to like the next Avatar type thing. Chronicle her journey so that the next one has something to go off. Um, this one though Legacy of the Fire Nation immediately had interest because this is a book that Iroh is putting together talking about his experiences and giving to Zuko uh, with the idea as we'll get into with one of these preview pages that it seems like he's giving this to Zuko towards the end of his life but we'll get into it now so first up uh, we have a uh, placeholder cover I'm assuming it's a placeholder because why would this book have a random book one Zuko image on the front? I'm assuming they will change that to being a one, not a stock piece of uh, art from Avatar and instead being a art piece of art we've never seen before. And it might be Zuko, but I get the feeling it'd probably be better if this was Iroh. Um, but maybe both. But Iroh and Zuko, that would fit better. Either way, I think the idea here is that ju that's just an image to get across that the image will be in that position type thing. I think the rest of the book will probably remain the same. Uh, it seems fine, black and gold. It looks nice otherwise. Um, great, you know, the, the cover that for Avatar Legacy was actually quite good with Aang and Tenzin on the cover. The new Avatar's Chronicle cover looks good. Once they get the, the, the new one, that'll be fine. It even says on the bottom, you know, final cover to be uh, revealed. So, you know. It's a placeholder. They didn't have that on previous ones, which was confusing, but uh, they put it on this one, thankfully. Um, so, first up, the first two preview pages. One is just an image of Zuko, but we get the sort of uh, foreword to this book giving you the information. So, like I said, it's Iroh giving this book as a gift to Zuko. Here's what it says. My dear Prince Zuko, the following pages are my gift to you, my prince. They are part letter, part memory book, and while they certainly may benefit from some trimming, these pages represent the truth, at least as I saw it and experienced it. At worst, they're a place for an old man to catch his thoughts before they leave his head like ashes on the wind, and to pass on to you all that I have learned. I'm calling it Legacy of the Fire Nation, or Old Iroh's Guide to Pai Show and Other Nonsense. I'll let you pick the title. You will notice that I may ramble on at times, and that there will likely be parts of it that you skip or get bored by. But in my experience, you're only ready to hear what you're ready to hear. And when you are ready to hear it, um, and when you are ready to hear it, so just hush and listen, nephew. Okay, a bit of a weird run-on sentence there, but okay. Um, I hope these pages remind you of my my voice and my presence, for you know I will always be with you. I hope I can give you the benefit of my years and what my eyes have seen and what that perspective has bought me. Uh, bought me? Okay, brought me? Shouldn't it be? Um, again, they'll, they'll, they'll edit a lot of this better when it comes out. And more importantly, what my heart has felt. An old man has uh, less to hold in his hands in his last days, but uh, much more th than he can carry in his heart. I don't want this to be a burden. Instead, I pray that it will be a comfort. I want this to be a gift for you, my prince. Uh, most knowledge must be earned. But if I'm lucky, the passages in this book will allow you to borrow my knowledge and aid you in making good choices and that you uh, will own your experiences. Uh, know that I'm always thinking of you and that by gifting you my story, I only hope to add to yours and the family I hope you one day make for yourself. Now get reading 
Uh, if you don't, I'll come back as a grumpy spirit and haunt you. Only joking, kind of. With love, your Uncle Iroh. So, final design to be revealed. I suppose that's getting across that. I think that's a, that, that's more or less a stock piece of art there for Zuko. So, um, I think they're just getting across the idea that when the book actually comes out, that will be a kind of custom piece of art uh, with probably an image of Zuko on it. But, anyway... The text itself, I think, is fine. I think some of the word choices and, like, maybe grammar of it isn't, like, I think, perfectly ideal um, in terms of flowing particularly nicely. But I think the core of it meant to be Iroh sort of speaking to Zuko is more or less there. It is him having these sort of uh, pearls of wisdom in the middle of just, you know, you know, having this heartfelt kind of letter to Zuko that you know, learn from, you know, my experiences, uh, he talks, you know, always about, you know, an old man and stuff like that, um, and, you know, just throughout, you know, it's, it's littered with, uh, I think, stuff that you get, that Iroh kind of would say, so, um, there's no new information here, but I don't think you expect it to be in this sort of foreword where it's just getting across the idea of, here's what this book is. So, the second page is the, 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 last two preview pages are the two interesting ones in my opinion because it's based off these two that I think give us a sense for what the rest of the book will be like in terms of I think where the hype is for this book which is how much new content will there be in this book uh, and how much of the mystery of Iroh will sort of be changed because of this book. So my brother Ozai, my dearest nephew, I, I, I know I don't speak often of your father, but the deepest uh, scars take the longest to heal. Believe it or not, reopening old wounds uh, over tea is not my favorite pastime, but you deserve to know more. From the day he could crawl, the fire in your father burned bright. He was stubborn and impatient. It seemed like nothing could slow him down, not even me. As we grew up, we grew competitive as brothers do, but his ambition was often greater than my own. We would fight like warriors over games of Pai Show, where he would grow frustrated and, in fits of rage, flip, uh, flip the board, spilling pieces in the air and often burning them. At first... Anyone could dismiss his fury as little more than temper tantrums, but I worried it was something worse than just an impetuous heart. On the other page we get, In school he showed ruthlessness uh, that I envied for a time, but the older we got, the clearer it was to me that... Uh, the clear it was for me to see that one day we would all get burned. The fire in our people, the fire in your father, and in you, has the ability to provide warmth, inspire community, and sharpen the spirit. When unbidden and untampered, however, it will destroy, break, and lay waste to the worlds of man. When I looked in my brother's eyes, there was only fire and ash, and in his chest a heart of ice. Sometimes I blame myself, I search my past for some moment when I could have reacted differently, or been a better guide for my brother. But looking back, instead of forward is a fool's errand, and I too, I'm, and I'm too old to play the fool. There have been times, uh, nephew, when I saw your father in you. But more than that, I've always known you would become the man I wish your father had been. There is much about my brother I wish had been different, but I will always be grateful he was here because he brought uh, me you. So, this is interesting because everyone points out, and it's this kind of crazy thing that, like, if you haven't really been thinking about it, it's, it's really hard to kind of grasp in your mind that Iroh and Ozai have never talked on screen in any media. They've been in the same scene together. I think one of the only ones is um, where Zuko got scarred. But they didn't actually interact. So our thoughts on their dynamic come down to the couple of times Iroh has mentioned Ozai. And the couple of times Ozai has mentioned Iroh. And even those times are fairly you know, uh, small. And, and they haven't really gone into a lot of depth. Iroh kind of would mention every so often that, like, like in the earlier episodes, you know, like, my brother's not a forgiving man and stuff like that. Trying to roughly get across the idea that, like, Zuko, you know this mission he sent you on to find the Avatar. It's, it's a fool's errand. That's what it's meant to be. But not to be so harsh about it. Iroh knows o Ozai is like that. He, he wouldn't give Zuko another chance. Um... Obviously, towards the finale, he's like, I, you know, if I fought my brother, you know, it would be a problem. Not that I know I could beat my brother. So he gets across the idea that he respects Ozai's power. And um, because potentially because of past interactions of them having 
sparring matches or whatever. Um, Ozai, the only few times he's mentioned Iroh have been, you know, kind of insulting him of basically being different than him because, oh, you know, you know, let's make tea, peace over tea type stuff and insulting Iroh, but no real insight into it. And I think that attitude continues over to Azula, who also doesn't respect Iroh in any way. And I think the impression I get is that Iroh has a certain respect for Ozai in terms of like how powerful he is uh, and would never, you know, underestimate Ozai. Whereas Ozai, I think I get the impression, does um, really, really, really underestimate Iroh. So, you know, from a power pr- level perspective, you know, I suppose most of us, I suppose, would lean with the idea that Iroh is the more powerful fighter and that personality wise, um, Ozai would expect to be better than Iroh, but would actually be shocked by just how impressive Iroh actually is. So, this stuff here on these two pages is actually, for the most part, like, it's all new. Now, ultimately, you know, there's no super specific scenario mentioned here. It's just kind of vague growing up, but the sort of sentiment, the idea, the dynamic that you learn is actually a new dynamic we didn't know about. We didn't really know that they had that sort of, sort of, you know, competitive, you know, always sort of, you know, challenging each other over everything, you know, style. Uh, I, I don't think we didn't really know like much about the two of them when they were younger, like with the idea that Ozai was always the more ruthless one and that Iroh actually envied the fact that Ozai was like that with the, I think idea that the background to this is that it's meant to be this case I suppose that Iroh they both I suppose wanted to impress their father kind of be like their father be like their grandfather which required ruthlessness to be one of those evil fire lords and Iroh you know always thought that he didn't quite have it compared to say an Ozai that is interesting because the scene where, like, everyone always goes back to is the one where, like, Iroh sends the letter and is like, you know, if I don't burn it to the ground first, then you get the impression, like, oh, so Iroh used to be, you know, full-on evil then in the past, when I think there's a, there's enough evidence there to point to the fact of, like, okay, you know, he was maybe more loyal to the Fire Nation years ago, but that he was never Ozai level of, like, you know, that ruthless and, and all that sort of stuff. He was always much more thoughtful about things like the fact that they play Pai show and Iroh always won I think is an interesting dynamic and that even him kind of talking about the idea of like you know I saw all of this stuff happening and I probably you know I wish I could have reacted differently been a better guide to him you know it gets across the idea that you know he's, he's saying his past wasn't perfect he probably could have corrected some stuff earlier on if he was thinking more about things it's it's interesting without having a ton of depth to it and i suppose this begs the question then based off this does this mean that when we get to the inevitable page that talks about characters like luten iroh's son one how can there not be a page covering that character if it's iroh's life history of the fire nation i think it's fairly notable that effectively you know, someone who was in line at some point for the throne, Luten, died in the middle of a big war. That's a huge thing because Luten's death actually ends up leading to a lot of stuff happening. It leads to, you know, eventually uh, Ozai taking over. It f- effectively forces the situation that happens with uh, Ursa in the search and so on. So, Luten's death is important from a plot perspective, but the side of it that we don't have the full context for is actually the the very personal side. Apart from the fact that we know it, uh, you know, pains Iroh, of course, and we don't actually have full context for it. In that he he the word the dialogue that he says is like, uh, "I'm sorry, I couldn't help you in the same way that I helped everyone else this day." Basically, and that begs the question of like. Is that just him saying, like, I wish I could have helped you during the incident in combat where you died? Or is he saying that there was a day they actually were at kind of odds with each other? They had a little bit of an argument going on at the time and that he wishes he could have been sort of as wise as he was now back then and fix things with Luten before he died or something like that. 
and you know basically you know was there more of a personal issue going on there and or was it just literally they got on well but this was a tragedy who knows either way adding more context to that's going to be fairly important even if if even if it's only vague but just characterizing Lutan what what was the what type of character was he was he more like Ozai or was he more like Iroh then the other thing is when you do mention Lutan how can you do that without then mentioning the mother who is Lutan's mother who is Iroh's wife question mark I don't really know the, this book seems like the perfect opportunity to at least reveal a name if even if you can't go in depth or anything like that reveal something um, and cover that about explaining why she's not around did she die in childbirth as many suspect did she just leave or or what was Iroh ever married what what was the story there ultimately that's what we don't know and I think what we really would want to know then you get into all the other sort of stuff like after that okay spirit world journey when did that happen when did he join the order of the white lotus how did he join the order of the white lotus um especially because he is like one of the highest ranking members that we see who got him involved in it i suppose is is a huge thing um when did he go to the water tribe to learn uh, from them and invent uh, lightning redirection uh, ancient sun warriors uh, you know becoming the you know the dragon you know gaining that title when did that happen specifics behind that are there any i can see the book referencing a lot of this but without giving any new information and i think that's where it's going to be pretty telling in that i think the page here the pages here with with ozai are actually actually relatively well written it gives more insight than i actually would have expected the book to do in that just based off avatar legacy uh, you you told me like oh the uh, the the iro book is going to have two pages where he talks about ozai i would have said okay yeah yeah they'll, they'll just randomly talk about how he was more powerful than me basically referencing the few scenes where iro does talk about ozai but actually there's full on new insight here that we didn't know about just reflections on their childhood together that's all new stuff if they do that level of stuff for like Lu Ten, where it would make more sense to go more in depth, then this could be great. If the book spends like most of the book just talking about Zuko's journey and like here's this episode, here's that episode, that's going to be frustrating. If they focus more time on Iroh's journey, him learning about the spirit world stuff, lightning redirection, learning the true way of firebending from the dragons, that's going to be really, really interesting. I don't know how much they'll go in depth, but I'd like it. Um, just any way at all possible to give new information and um, because i assume there's going to have to be a page where you probably go over the fire nation royal family tree again and you you cover all of that stuff again like going all the way back cover the family tree um and like i assume that would involve like potentially mentioning like ela who is uh ozai and iroh's mother uh sozin i'd like to see potentially sozin's wife get named in all of this um and cover some of the, some of that kind of uh backstory other than that like i'm not sure you're sure it's called a legacy of the fire nation so like will it be very fire nation focused in terms of like history and we'll go into like the fire sages and stuff like that i'm not entirely sure but uh you know i, I suppose it'll be a question of like Avatar Legacy did a lot of stuff where it was basically like, oh, this is meant to be this sort of really emotional scrapbook that Aang put together for you. And then most of the book was actually just a kind of like geography textbook of the world. Like, here's the fauna of this nation, here's the fauna of this nation. It's like, that's fine, but like, it'd be so weird if just in the middle of all of this, like, there is something along that lines of just like, oh yeah, and Zuko, here's the animals of the Fire Nation for some reason. That's kind of the way they filled up these books in the past, so we'll see what they do going forward here. Obviously, this is all very early stuff. This book isn't out until February 2020, so we're still, like, what, eight months away from this book being out? Um, But I have some hope. I I do have some hope for this book, uh, just based off, I think, some positives that come out of those Ozai pages. So, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on uh, the these preview pages for Legacy of the Fire Nation. 
do you think they will, based off what they do here with Ozai, go in depth or will it be another disappointing book? Definitely let me know your thoughts on that. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.